Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo, and we know that planning a cruise for 2021 and 2022 can be very stressful. So we wanted to take some of that stress off your plate and tell you everything you need to know about booking a cruise with our ultimate guide to booking a cruise. We have six steps that'll ensure you have an amazing cruise. All that coming right up. One of the reasons we made this channel was to help you have the best vacation and make the most memorable moments possible. With all that's gone on this last year with COVID-19, we wanted to look to the future. We have six easy steps that'll ensure that you book an amazing cruise that'll you, that you'll never forget. We'll give you all the tips that we know of, and of course, if you've missed any or if you've got your own cruise tips, please add them in the comment section below. So here we go. Step number one, budget. I am the cheap one between Aaron and I. So the first thing we, well, rather I would want to get set <laughs> is our budget. And so how much do we want to spend on our trip? And do we have any future cruise credits left with any cruise lines that we want to use up? And then keeping in mind when you do go on a cruise, it's not just the cost of the cruise, but you will also incur costs for other things like gratuities, drinks, beverages, excursions, specialty dining, and of course anything that you may want to be purchasing at the port or on the ship. There could be a lot of extra cruise costs. <laughs> yes. So if you want to know more about these additional costs, we do have a video that explains the tips and the gratuities. I'm sure that will be up here. I yes. Think. <laughs> Additionally, any spa treatments, casino, additional recreational activities on board and special events can also cost extra money and can be added, it will be added to your onboard cruise account. So when you leave, you then get your nice bill at the end of the cruise. <laughs> So I really like having a budget set for this or before we go, we like to sit down and talk. What are the specialty dining we're going to go to? How much are we going to spend on that? I wouldn't use the word like. I like to know how much we're going to have for that. So when you are budgeting for your cruise, making sure you've got that aside as well. Yeah. This is very dependent on what you want to do on your cruise, of course. And some of it can be prepaid, so you can pay in advance to avoid a large bill at the end after your nice relaxing cruise. For example, be sure to book your excursions, pay for your gratuities, and any additional bottles of water or soft drinks and other things you might want in your stateroom. You may also be interested in the unlimited beverage packages. Many, many of the cruise lines out there have these and they range in price. We do have a video for Norwegian Cruise Lines beverage package. If you're interested in taking one of those cruises, you can check out our video as well. Your budget can also affect the cruise line you go on. So we'll want to talk a bit more about that later as to which the different cruise lines are. Yeah, and so on to step number two. So now that you have your budget planned, and uh, you want to be starting to think about where do you want to go? And there are so many amazing destinations that you can pick from, but keep in mind some of these destinations do have a seasonality to them. So when deciding where you want to go, also be aware of the time of year. And we're going to go through some of the more popular destinations in the time of year that is best for those areas. So the first one would be to visit Alaska, and the best time of year for that is between mid-May to mid-September, with prime sailing season being mid-July, uh, mid-June to mid-July due to weather conditions. And we actually did a, an Alaska cruise, and we went at the very beginning of July, and we looked out. The weather was perfect. Yeah, was we great. kept being told it's it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain, it's a rainforest. Rain and yeah, once. So if you're looking, that that just so happened to work out great for us. Yeah. And it's a bit less crowded. Yes. For the Mediterranean, you'll want to visit between April to November, with July and August being the peak time to travel and the most crowded. So if you can avoid that July-August range, that would be the best. In the Caribbean, although basically all year round is great, the best weather for Caribbean cruising is from December to April. However, the most economic time will be August to November, where you can get some really great deals. As a teacher, however, we usually do end up traveling in the summer, and it is hot in the Caribbean. I love the heat, Aaron. Not, not so much. I, I like the uh, the ice uh, bars that they have, so I can sit in my little igloo and enjoy the cold. Yeah, so just be prepared if you are somebody who doesn't love the heat that you're getting yeah. some breaks in it, there it as gets, well. It can get very hot, and some of the some of the some of the ports that you walk, the some of the the docks that you walk down can be incredibly long. Yes. So. Yeah, it's definitely not always Have great. water. Yeah. If you're looking to go to Asia, generally you'll find November to March is the busiest time for cruising. However, you can also find a great deal by booking in just sort of the shoulder season, so slightly outside of November and March. 
For Europe, the prime time to cruise is around July and August. However, the entire, entire season spans from late April to early September when you can find some good deals on your cruise. So on to step three, when deciding which cruise line you want to sail with, think about your personality and what kind of cruise you really want. Each of the cruise lines do have different personalities, so if you're looking to explore new countries, or party at a pool, or relax at the spa, these are all different things you can do. Do you want more traditional cruising? Do you want to really dress up for that formal night? You know, do you want to have a lot of great entertainment? Do you, you know, some people like to just stick with the cruise line and keep with the rewards programs. You know, some of the princess cruises and other cruise lines out there can definitely give you some really great rewards programs. So what sort of a, what sort of a cruise are you looking for? So Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines is known to be very family friendly. They have all sorts of unique features like ice rinks and zip lines, surfing, the robotic bartenders, so much more. If you want to know more about their latest cruise ship, the Odyssey of the Sea, we also do have a video about that and all the key new features that it's got. As the name suggests, they do have amazing an amazing presence in the Caribbean. So if you're looking for a Caribbean cruise, Royal Caribbean might be right for you. Norwegian Cruise Lines has a freestyle cruise and it's an unlimited drink package. Uh, pretty much anytime you go on a Norwegian cruise, everyone's going to have the unlimited drink package. There are lots of options to choose from with Norwegian, from unlimited alcohol to free Wi-Fi or even free excursions. However, some travelers find that there are lots of extra charges. And to be honest, we kind of felt that way when we were on our Norwegian cruise. There's a lot of sort of upcharges. Princess Cruise Lines is more of a traditional cruise line offering a sophisticated cruise experience. Princess also offers some great enrichment programs, uh, including lectures, presentations, and talks at different ports of call from the Discovery program. You may find the average age on board is a little bit older when it comes to Princess, but we've always enjoyed the focus that Princess puts on some of the simpler things they put on their experience, on their food. We've sailed with them num numerous times. Places like Alaska, they're very well known for. And they also have cruise tours, which includes rail travel on the Rocky Mountaineer and some amazing cabins in Alaska. Princess is definitely a good option if you're looking for you know, a sophisticated cruise and you really want to enjoy Alaska. They're really great in Alaska. And they will have the enrichment activities where somebody comes on board and will tell you everything about Alaska and all the different you know, fish and wildlife that's there. So you know, we, we really enjoy that. Celebrity Cruise Lines offers a trendy and more modern experience. A few of the offerings are wine tasting and glass blowing, which is interesting on a cruise ship. They do offer some great exotic destinations as well. Holland American Cruise Line is a great cruise line for people who want to have some great food and music. They might not have as many activities on board, but it's all about socializing and spectac spectacular itineraries. They're well known for their terrific Alaskan voyages with pre and post cruise options, just like Princess with land and sea. Disney Cruise Lines, of course we have to mention Disney Cruise Lines, is the ultimate cruise for Disney lovers. They're also known for their high-end quality, terrific fruit, food, and fun for everybody on, in your family. If you do have kids, this is definitely a cruise line you should consider. And even if you don't have kids, Disney focuses on food and entertainment. They also have adults only areas, so you're not stuck with Mickey Mouse everywhere. They do have sort of private areas. That's for... a bad thing. <laughs> they do have private areas. And, you know, for the most part, it's a bit more expensive than others on the list, but do be aware of your budget. And this could be something for everybody on your cruise. Carnival Cruise Lines has a lot of activities and is a good value, making it popular for cruising on a budget. They have lots of dining options. It's all about having a good time with Carnival. They have one of the premier cruise lines for the, they are one of the premier cruise lines for the Caribbean. And you know, they hit that price to value ratio really well. So if you're interested in a Caribbean cruise as well, Carnival could be up your alley. So for step number four, we suggest you consider what type of ship you want to go on. There are many different types of cruise ships that you can choose from for your cruise. The larger ships have a ton of sort of novelty experiences like the flow riders, simulated skydiving, bumper cars, and so much more. Smaller ships can have a much more relaxed feeling that focus on executing key things really well. And of course, there's everything in yeah. between as well. The question you need to ask yourself, is the cruise ship the destination or are the ports? On many of the really large ships that feature these recreational activities, you can book them early. And sometimes the port days are the best time to try them because there's not as many people on the ship. On the other hand, with smaller ships, when you are at port, you're able to get on and off a lot quicker and more efficiently. 
So what are the options when it comes to the ships? Smaller ships can provide more ports of call as they're more maneuverable and compact. They also provide a much more traditional cruise-like experience with fewer recreational activities, but still with a focus on customer service and generally on food. These smaller ships can provide a nice relaxing experience for you and your family. Some of the larger ships will provide lots of entertainment options, whether you're talking about the latest Quantum class ship from Royal Caribbean or Carnival's Excel class. These ships will have lots of amenities and due to the updated propulsion systems and the cleaner fuels, you'll be seeing these ships in places you wouldn't have historically seen them, like Norwegian crews uh, positioning the Bliss in Alaska, which features a huge go-kart track on top of it, <laughs> not something you'd expect to do in Alaska. Yeah, exactly. If you're looking for all new features, the larger ships is definitely the way to go. There are, of course, river cruises, but that's a whole different video. So we'll just highlight that if you want to go on a river cruise ship, you can't take like those can also get you places that the larger ships can't go like the Rhine River. So you'll want to be checking those out. We like to consider really newer versus older when it comes to us. Generally, the newer ship will have will be a little bit more expensive, but that doesn't mean that it was only built recently. Many of the refurbished ships also can also have a higher price. So that said, our personal opinion is that we like to, when we like to go cruising, it will be on a ship that's only about 10 years old or newer, either since it was built or from when it was refurbished. We're big fans of the more modern design and of the cru of cruise ships, but if you really liked the previous generation of the cruise aesthetic, that's totally up to you. For us, usually, as I said, we like things that were retrofitted within the last 10 years. So what cabin should you pick? Well, that's step number five. So you've decided on your ship, and now you need to pick the cabin that you want because there's always lots of subtypes. So we're not going to necessarily get into the subtypes, but we're going to stick to the main regular cabin types. Those are the interior stateroom, ocean view stateroom, balcony stateroom, and suites. Although there are subtypes, as we said, like deluxe balconies, which have things like larger balconies or more interior space, the functional difference of a balcony remains the same. <laughs> interior state rooms are those located within the center of the ship, meaning there's no windows or balconies. Some ships, such as the Royal Caribbean or Disney ships, have near full length televisions that broadcast a view from the outside of the ship to give you the feeling of a window, but they're completely on the inside of the ship. Generally, interior state rooms will be the cheapest option. However, in reality, if you're only sleeping in your state room, and you're planning on being above deck most of the time, then this could be a great option for you. Ocean view staterooms are usually located on the lower decks on the ship, and they'll have a window or a view towards the water. There's several different types of windows, which can be very important as to what view you're gonna have. They come from picture windows to portholes. Generally, these cabins are a step up from an interior room as they do have a view of the outside, so you get to see the water. Uh, and if you really want to maximize your investment, you're going to want to find one with large picture windows so you can see more. For people who need some natural light to wake up, and yes, that's definitely me. I am not waking up without that. And you'll find yourself above deck most of the time, then this could be a perfect option for you. Balcony state rooms are rooms that, of course, traditionally have space that you can walk out outside onto. Usually the space is somewhat limited, so balconies are never amazingly huge, but there's enough space for a chair or two and a side table. Uh, the more, more and more cruise lines are actually optimizing for this, so you're going to start seeing more and more balconies and more balcony options on newer ships. If you plan on just spending some time on the balcony and enjoying the sights, then this is definitely the stateroom type to get. There are some amazing destinations like Alaska and the Baltic Cruise or the Mediterranean where balconies are really useful. You'll probably find the decks above are incredibly busy as people are watching the glaciers or the fjords and it provides you with a bit of your own personal space to unwind and have a drink. Again, there are a lot of subtypes to balcony cabins from partially obstructed to extended, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Suites are usually the highest end of the pricing spectrum, and you'll find anything from multi-room suites to two-story suites. Generally, this will have a balcony, and at some point, the price can range from hundreds of dollars for something like the Havana Suites on Carnival uh, to the Walter E. Disney Suite, which is on the Disney Cruise Lines, which can cost tens of thousands of dollars. If you can afford these, please invite us. <laughs> yeah, I don't see myself going to that Walter Suite anytime soon. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> <laughs> so on to the last step, step number six. So you've picked your cruise, the ship type, your cabin. Uh, you're done, right? Not quite. 
Maybe one of the most important things is where your cabin is gonna be located on the ship. It may seem like a small thing, but there are some important considerations to take into account. Now, these are rules of the thumb and each ship is different. So noise, depending on where your cabin is, it can be very noisy. You'll want to avoid a few key areas. So you don't want to pick a cabin that is just below the Lido decks because you could hear lots of noise in the morning as they're moving the deck chairs around. You also want to avoid being above the main theaters as you can get noise from the shows leaking into your cabin. And if you're going with an interior cabin or ocean view, avoid the lowest decks due to the engine noise or vibrations from things like the bow thrusters and engines as they're right below your cabin. You may also want to avoid being near the elevators as there can be a lot of noise from people coming back and forth from their cabins late at night. And you can also get the mechanical noise from the elevators. This may be a good option though for you if you do have mobility concerns and you want to be near the elevator. Kids and Teens Club can also be loud and open late, so unless you're thinking you'll be at the, those Teens Clubs often, you may want to stay away from them. We've been close though and haven't had any issues, so depending on the ship, it may be loud. So location and convenience when you're on the cruise ship is incredibly important. There can be a lot of walking. If you think you'll be around the Lido decks more often, why not try to get a cabin near the Lido decks? We do that so we can go through the, the, through the buffet. <laughs> if you're gonna be going to the spa or the kids centers, you can definitely find a cabin closer to those areas. There are also generally spa cabins and those will be near the spa. Lastly, if you're thinking about getting an obstructed view cabin, we highly recommend looking at the deck plans of the ship as well as photos online to see how obstructed it is because they don't really ever tell you. Obstructions can range from a small bit of the balcony being, con being covered to nearly the entire thing. This is a must and maybe the most important thing if you're thinking about an obstructed view balcony. Nothing's more disappointing than finding out there's a large tender or a lifeboat that's hanging in front of your entire view. On one of our cruises in the Baltic, we had a front facing cabin that was quote unquote obstructed. And that basically meant that they had a small metal wire with lights that was moving up the front of the ship and the balcony, uh, this, the bottom part of the balcony was also metal, so it wasn't glass. If you want more information about front facing balconies, which we personally enjoy, uh, we will post a video as well above. So that's all that we've got for the steps to go through, but we do have some additional tips we wanted to let you know as well. So before we go, we have a couple things that we like to keep in mind. If you want to avoid some of these things, a travel agent can help ensure that you've got the perfect stateroom. Yeah, if you find some of these things difficult or you don't want to go through these steps, then a travel agent absolutely can, can help you out. You also want to be aware of cancellation dates and flexibility. Many of the cruise lines have changed their policies and you'll just want to be sure you can cancel last minute without any penalty. Many cruise lines still have their last date to pay being 90 days out from your cruise, so you'd want to budget for that too. You'll also want to look into the beverage package options. We had talked about this a bit earlier. However, we do have a video again on Norwegian Cruise Lines beverage package, and depending on how you and your travel partners like to party, the beverage package could either be a great cost-saving tips or simply losing money. <laughs> could be easier just to get a regular drink at the bar and pay that way. Beverage packages range in price depending on the cruise line, so double check how much it'll cost and decide if it actually works for you. Yeah, and they do also, what we actually found worked better for us was just the pop package, because yeah. you know that was good. And somebody in one of our other videos posted if they could have like a coffee, coffee, coffee. or just lattes. She was yeah. like, I could just drink all the lovely lattes, but it, they so often link that in yeah. with other drink packages. I think Princess so. still has a coffee package, but many other cruise lines, just, yeah. it's, you, you have to get the, the most expensive one and that'll include your coffee. So just something else to look at before you get on the ship because on the first day there's always the big lines to add yeah. those on so you can do that beforehand. Excursions are also really useful to book ahead of time as many can get quite busy and fully booked, especially Disney. Oh, also in a Disney cruise, make sure that if you want childcare, you are on that because uh, the last Disney cruise we booked the childcare stuff is gone in like five seconds. I think it was gone even before it got to us because yeah. we were, were new to the Disney cruise. So everybody who had cruised before gets to book yeah. early. So watch out for that. Yeah. Uh, but excursions, <laughs> you can also find most of the excursions at your port, especially in the Caribbean. However, do be aware that the official cruise line uh, excursions are the only ones that'll wait for you if there's an issue. So, you know, if you're traveling far away or you're going somewhere that could have lots of traffic, it 
could be best to go with a cruise line. We were stuck for hours on a train in Berlin uh, when a train malfunctioned and the crews luckily waited for us. And without that, they definitely would not have waited for us. Yeah. One other quick tip as well is the medical packages. There is medical insurance for a lot of these cruises and it's definitely something you might want to consider, not just because of what has been going on, but to get off of a ship or to get health, so to get health treatment somewhere could be very expensive and it can also be very expensive on the actual cruise ship. They do have a medical area, but again, you know, you probably want to go somewhere else <laughs> and that can be very expensive. So we hope that you've enjoyed our steps and tips as, as Aaron said. We just want to help make booking and planning easier for you guys. For some people, budget's going to be more important than destination. For other people, getting on one of those brand new cruise ships is going to be what's more important. They don't care where it goes. So these are just some ideas to, to keep in mind. And if you've got other things that you think is important, yeah, please do leave it in the comments below. We do love hearing from you guys as well. So if you're thinking of going on in one of these new ships. We actually do have a couple great videos that go over everything you need to know about Princess's new ship, the Enchanted Princess, as well as Carnival's new ship, Mardi Gras. We also have one about all the new ships in 2021 uh, and 2022 that'll be coming out. So if we haven't talked about them here, there's also that video. Yes. So again, we really hope that you find it helpful. Thanks so much for watching and all your support. So you've come this far in the video, so thanks again for watching. If you want to hit that like and subscribe button, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and happy travels. <laughs>